You're listening to Ill Poet Society. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. On March 23, 1944, in Alkaloo, South Carolina, these two white girls was riding bikes by the tracks that separate the whites and blacks. They was looking for Maypop flowers, but within hours they came up missing. Wishing that I had never told the sheriff that I had seen them, the white girls' bodies turned up the next day in a ditch not too far from where I stay. I was even part of the search to find them, but I found myself being blamed for the murder of Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames, ages 11 and 8. I began to panic as the white folks' rage raced at a pace too swift for me to even contemplate getting someplace safe. And before I could even count to five, I heard somebody say the nigger boy was the last one to see him alive. I wanted to run, but my feet couldn't move. So I couldn't run and there was no point at this point because I was quickly surrounded by a white mob with guns. I resigned myself to the fact that I was going to be lynched that very instant, but in that same instant, the sheriff grabbed me and took me to jail. My name is George Jr. Stinney Jr., and I'm being arrested for the killing of Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames, ages 11 and 8. The mob followed us all the way to the jail. Meanwhile, I'm crying for my life and wanted to see my mother, because I wasn't guilty of nothing but being in the wrong place at the wrong time while being the wrong color. Small for my age, I was slightly built. But the interrogation proceedings began with a bunch of questions centered around the presumption of my guilt. You see, the good old boy reasoning wouldn't allow them to realize that at 5'1", 95 pounds, there was no way I could wrestle both girls to the ground, somehow manage to crush the skull of one while simultaneously subduing the other, and transporting both bodies away from the scene in broad daylight without being seen. But the resolve of the sheriff could not be understated because he decided he was leaving that room with a confession even if he had to fabricate it. He offered me ice cream and said that I could go home and he'd forget it if I just admit that I did it. Now after hours of questioning with fear, exhaustion, and the naivete of my age combining to compromise my judgment, I admitted being the perpetrator of the incident and in that very instant relinquished my innocence. The sheriff left the room and I heard him say he just confessed that he was after sex. The little nigger boy just put the noose around his own neck. Best bet we get him to Charleston and out of sight. The lynch mob won't let the nigger survive the night. My name is George Jr. Stinney Jr. And I'm being charged with the killing of Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames, ages 11 and 8. The next morning I was sitting in my cell and I heard an officer tell another that my father had lost his job. And he and my family had left town the previous night in fear of their lives. I hadn't signed anything and no one talked to me about an attorney, but the jury selection began at 10, ended around 12 for the trial itself to start at 2.30. I couldn't do no bargaining and I wasn't in a position to, and that's probably how my defense attorney ended up being the county tax commissioner. Now blacks were not allowed in the courtroom, so you know there were none on the jury. Quick, fast, and in a hurry with no witnesses, transcripts, written confession, or evidence. After 10 minutes, I was sentenced to death with no hesitance. My name is George Jr. Stinney Jr., and I have just been convicted of the double homicide of Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames, ages 11 and 8. By the time June 16th came, I resigned myself to the fact that I was going to die and convinced myself that I was not going to give them white folks the satisfaction of seeing me cry. Of this crime, I'm innocent. I done said it from the beginning and my contention is not diminished one bit by your bigoted justice system or a death sentence from an all-white jury that deliberated my innocence for a whole of 10 minutes. I grabbed my Bible and the guards walked me down the hall. A door at the end of the hall is all I saw. I walked in the room and handed the attendant my Bible and took a seat. But I was so small the straps kept falling off and sliding down around my feet. The attendant looked at me and froze. I was too short to reach the face mask and electrodes. He took a second look and sat me on top of a stack of books. He stretched the electrodes to the limit to reach my head and cover my face with the mask is what he did. All of which was still too big. Then he pulled the switch. My body convulsed and twitched so much that my head came from under the bonnet, exposing my smoking nasal cavity and sizzling vomit. After four minutes, he turned off the power and my head lay tilted, with a sunken face, singed hair, and an eye missing. I'm sharing this with you so I'm not forgotten and the justice system is held accountable and in shame. Even though I may be long gone, don't give up trying to clear my name. My name is George Junior Stinney Jr., and I was executed for the double homicide of Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames, ages 11 and 8. And to this day, at 14, the youngest ever to be executed in the United States.